Well, just like that, the regular season's over. But the postseason is about to begin, and they include the Arizona Diamondbacks. This is Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all the Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. You can check out my lower third. You can call me Sully. I am an Emmy-nominated television producer who has been a baseball podcaster for well over a decade now, and we just finished our fifth season here at the Locked On Podcast Network. But those season will go on in terms of the postseason. And we're going to be continuing to do shows all throughout the offseason, too. Follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I am your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter. And if you're watching the film Twister, that's still my... my, uh, Or if you're playing the game Twister, I'm still Sully Baseball on Twitter or X or whatever the hell it's called now. I'm at Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And please, please subscribe, 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 subscribe to us on the YouTubes. But once a week, I do not fly solo. This guy right over there joins me in the den. Please introduce yourself to the crowd. Yes, Miller Thomas, host of Lock on Dimebacks here. I have my Twitter account as Creator Thomas24. If you want to follow the personal account or look up Lock on Dimebacks, both Twitter, Instagram for the podcast handle. And please hit subscribe to Lock on Dimebacks on the YouTube channel as well. All right, let's just do a little bit of house cleaning right now. Uh, we are recording this on Sunday. The games literally just ended. The, the Braves just lost to the Nationals, and that was the final regular season game of 2023 the the twins wound up losing to colorado in extra innings all the games started at the same time so therefore they all ended roughly the same time that would have been really really dramatic if the mariners had won the night before we would not have known the seedings of you know which ones would make it to the postseason it was still a fun exciting day um and one that had an element of sadness not just to red Sox fans but to baseball fans across Mm -hmm. the country and across the world learning about the death of Tim Wakefield. I'm going to talk a little bit about Tim Wakefield and his legacy in tomorrow's show. Just so you know, we're going to be covering a couple of things, including Tim Wakefield. I'm I, So I do want to just say rest in peace to Melbourne, Florida's favorite son. But I will talk a little bit about uh, his stunning passing. And he was, I believe he was 57 or 58 years yeah, old. He's not even old. Was, yeah, it was it was a terrible thing. Oh, uh, let's go through the trivia question. Uh, John Murphy Jr. has become one of our newest champions we have. He got the question right. The question was, when was the last time the Rookie of the Years, the players who would go on to win the Rookie of the Year, faced off in the World Series? And the answer, John Murphy Jr. got it correct, was 2010, the 2010 World Series. Neftali Feliz of the Rangers, Buster Posey. Is he going to be the next Giants manager of the Giants faced off? Um, and I, I, I phrased the question like that because I was trying to see when the last time of the rookie of the year played in the World Series in either league. And it was that year mm. that they played each other. So I thought that was kind of interesting there. So John Murphy Jr., you got it correct. Uh, we'll update it. If it is the Diamondbacks and the Orioles in the World Series, then I believe both uh, rookies of the year will be facing off right then. But let's get let's just jump into the meat and the potatoes. Uh, Saturday was everything must go. It was it was like it was like Walmart the day after Thanksgiving. Everyone clinched, including yeah. the D backs. Now right. I have to say the D backs clinched in my least favorite way that you can clinch, which is oh you saw it on the scoreboard. Hey, everybody, we lost, but we still celebrate. But do you know what? That's nitpicking. Yeah. The D-backs. Diamondbacks are in the postseason. Tell me your thoughts, Miller Thomas, when they did it. 
Yeah, I was in the arena, in the stadium when it happened. You looked at the scoreboard. You saw Cardinals final over the Reds, and you knew the D-backs game didn't matter any longer because that's the only score that mattered. D-backs went on to party the rest of the night. You looked at that box score today. They basically rested all their starters for today's game. As well they should. As well they should. As well they should. Both the Astros and D-backs. It's the first time where both teams actually clinch. And, you know, the Astros won the game. They end up clinching the AOS. D-backs lose the game. They clinch a postseason berth. So both teams are celebrating after the game. Champagne's flying everywhere. And as a D-backs fan, to see the D-backs back in the postseason, first time since 2017, it feels good. And I am a little bit surprised to see that it only took 84 wins to clinch that third wild card spot. Mm Because I thought maybe 86, 87. We've seen in the years past, you know, 87, 88. And 84 wins, not that high of a total. D-backs able to clinch that final wild card spot despite not winning none of their last four games. The D-backs end the season on a four-game losing streak and clinch a postseason spot. But it reminded me a little bit of when the Red Sox clinched the American League East in 2016. They collapsed in the ninth inning, and the Yankees won on like a walk-off. I think it was a grand slam. Either a walk-off grand slam or a walk-off three-run home run by Teixeira. And so the Yankees won. They scored like five runs or something in the in the bottom of the ninth to win the game. Mm-hmm. But the Red Sox came in and there were bottles of champagne there because they the team that was in second place, which I think was Baltimore that year, uh, lost. It must have been either Baltimore or Toronto. But they lost. Ergo, they won the East. And so it's like, oh, we just blew five runs. Well, let's bust out the champagne. And I remember there were some Red Sox fans saying, oh, they shouldn't have celebrated. I said, what are you talking about? It's not a celebration of that game. It's a celebration of the season. And, yeah, I know that the, the Diamondbacks had a rough final four games, even though they pitched extraordinarily well. They, their pitching was off the charts. Doesn't matter. They made it. This was not a team that was on everyone's dance card to make the postseason. No, and you saw all the players celebrating big time by all taking a little swim in the pool immediately after the game. I mean, how many times do you see a team lose and then all the players jump in a swimming pool after the celebrate and cool down after, you know, your loss here? So for the D-backs, I mean, yeah, you made it to the postseason. Sneakily, I kind of won the D-backs to get the third wild card spot just because we'll talk about the playoff matchups later. But I thought mm-hmm. it would be the path of least resistance to go Brewers, Braves, and then potentially Dodgers. So for me, even though the D-backs didn't end the season even with a victory, I'm glad that they clinched a playoff spot and specifically that third wild card spot because well, I think the path is just a little bit easier. All right, we'll get to that because yeah. I always think it's dangerous to uh, – uh, yeah. you know, you got to be careful what you wish for. I said in yesterday's show, I thought maybe the Astros – and the Dybex could have partied together. They all could have yeah, jumped they, in the swimming pool and everything yeah. like that. Because they're not going to face it. If they face each other in the postseason, Woo! then they'll face each other in the World Series. And therefore, that's really something to jump in the pool about. Uh, the Marlins, who, by the way, who picked the Marlins to be a wild card team at the beginning of the year? Sully, Sully Baseball, me. I think. I think Part so. of the reason was I thought Sandy Alcantara was going to be the Cy Young Award winner again. By the way, let's give a big shout out to Skip Schumacher and to Kim Eng yeah. for putting together this team and making the right moves, making the right trades, making the right, calling up the right people, pulling off the Arise for Lopez trade, bringing in uh, uh, Berger, bringing in Bell, who both came up huge down the stretch. So uh, Kim no. Eng, whose yeah. resume just was on for pages and pages. And if it was a PDF, it would crash your computer. Finally gets her first shot as the general manager. So far, so good. No, like you just said, Kim should probably be the executor of the year. Absolutely. The year. Absolutely. In, yeah, the moves she made in the offseason, all A pluses. I think have the best the trade deadline. deadline. Of any team. Yeah, I think have the best deadline of any team. Like Bell and Berger. Like, I didn't even know who I'm gonna be honest. Like I've said this multiple times. I didn't know who Berger was before the trade deadline. This guy's gonna have a 40 home run near 900 OPS season and be, you know, a, a monster this year for the Marlins and potentially in the playoffs too. So I think Kim is the executive of the year this year for the Marlins. You know, that's the that the Marlins fans better hope that this is this year's Eddie Rosario and Jorge Soler pickups the way that the Braves what did I say what have I been saying this whole time you make sure you put a major leaguer at each position you'll do all right and that's what the Marlins did and you know I talked a little bit about how you know the D-backs may have backed into it and the Marlins were the great recipients 
of a Cubs team that absolutely collapsed yeah. in September. But do you know what? Do you know who would love to have seen an 84-win season? The Padres. Yeah. The Mets. The Cardinals. Mm -hmm. The Giants. Go around. Think about all these big spending teams. You know, the Cubs. All these teams that had super high expectations, spent big money or brought in huge free agents or had the expectations of the big markets. And then I guarantee you, every one of them would love to pull a freaky Friday with the Arizona Diamondbacks backing into the postseason. Give the D-backs credit. Give the Marlins credit. They won the games they were supposed to win. They played as well as they could against the teams they were against and both of them had huge dips especially the arizona diamondbacks had that yeah, massive did. slump in in august where you and i were on this show saying well you were pulling the whole well we had a good first half yeah because it was like it was more than like a month it was like it was like almost two months of the d-backs looking like literally like the worst team in baseball i think they probably had the worst record from like mid-june to like early august they probably had won the three worst records in baseball during that time. And I really thought, like, I thought all hope was lost. I thought all the wheels have coming off this D-backs bandwagon. I thought it was going to fall short of the postseason. But they were able to right the ship a little bit there. Did really well just specifically against wild card teams, teams that they had to beat down the stretch, and they were able to get it done. And when you look at the MLB standings right now, it's kind of funny. Can you look at the Padres? They quietly, you can convince yourself that they didn't have – a terrible season. I mean, they're going yeah. to finish within two games of wild card spot. They have a plus 104 run differential, which is the best of any team that didn't finish as a division winner in the National League. And then the Cubs are also plus 96. So, like, those two teams disappointed down the stretch. But it's like they still, in terms of differential, finish well on the season, both of them above 500. Like, the Padres finishing ahead of both the Reds and the Giants just doesn't seem right with how we felt this Padres team played all season long. Let me just show you this. Uh, the, the Diamondbacks went eight and 16 in July mm -hmm. Yeah. in August and September, they combined for a 27 and 27 record. So in the second half of the season, they were, uh, they were 32 and 39 in the second half of the season. Oh man, that's not good. That's not very good. That's not good. But here's the thing they and, and you, and you got to give them credit where credit is due and you got to sometimes say, how did they do it? And a big chunk of it is win the games you're supposed to win. Yeah. And here's the stat. They played the Rockies 13 times and won 10 of them. Mm -hmm. Right there. That's, yeah. you know, if you're looking at, if you're looking at, and here's you know, what the record is combined against the Rockies and the Cubs was 16 and four. Yeah. They dominated the Chicago teams this year. And if you look at just like their last like month and a half of the season, like they beat all the wild card teams that they had to, they beat mm -hmm. the Giants, they beat the Padres, they beat the Cubs twice. They beat the Reds. They beat the Rangers. Like any team that they had to beat, like you said, they matched up with and they took care of business when they went to the New Yorks, like the Yankees and the Mets, they got destroyed in those situations, but the teams that they had to beat that directly competed with them in the wild card standings, they at least took care of business. there, just like the Miami Marlins and teams like the Cubs. Uh, I mean, they're going to have some question marks entering the offseason, but I feel like they have a good foundation. The biggest question mark is how much does that man, Cody Bellinger, get paid this offseason? Well, we're going to talk about some – well, we'll talk about the Cubs a little bit later because they're not even a playoff team. But we're going to talk about the defending champs and the ramifications of what just happened right after this. Yeah, because first, I need to talk to our listeners about this pair of shorts that I currently have on that I like to wear, you know, maybe three times a week when I'm doing podcasts because they're the most comfortable pair of shorts to wear. I'm talking about my bird dogs because bird dogs make you look good. Bird dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. You look like a Greek Adonis when you wear these. Bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as a Lululemon but fit way better. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of a stiff, restricting cotton. Bird Dogs fix this issue by inventing a cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you can get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Bird Dogs use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. 
Bird Dogs are functional for any occasion. I wear them to the store. I wear them to work out. I wear Bird Dogs for every occasion, even a wedding every now and then. So go to birddogs.com slash MLB or enter promo code LOCKEDONMLB at checkout for a free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash MLB for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you. All right. Now, the it really, really, really did. I mention really looked like when the uh, Rangers swept the uh, the Mariners and the Royals swept the Houston Astros, that the doors were wide open for the Texas Rangers to win the American League West. Mm-hmm. It was everything was set up there, and when. Aroldis Chapman came in with a lead on that game on Thursday in Seattle. It was it looked like it was a foregone the, the Rangers were on the verge of clinching a playoff spot, and then it was just it was simply a formality that they were going to win the West. And then Aroldis Chapman did what he does best, which is blow a big game. Uh, and the uh, the Astros wound up winning. Uh, what was it? Uh, five of their last six games mm-hmm. after being swept after be after losing three uh two out of three to the Orioles and being swept by the uh by the Royals and being in danger of falling into third place they were two and a half games out of first with with six to play two and a half with six to play and they almost ran the table they lost one game to Seattle they almost ran the table and on the final day of the season, they won. And because of the tiebreaker they have with the Texas Rangers, the defending World Series champion Astros, who were on the verge just a week or so ago of falling completely out of the playoffs, are now the Western Division champ again. The fact that they won nine out of 13 games against the Texas Rangers. Win those rivalry games, folks. Yeah. Even those games in April, win them, win them. They build up. And with that, despite the fact the Astros went 12 and 14 in September, you have to look at them as the favorites. Every Oriole fan in the world hates my guts. Every Rays fan in the world hates my guts. And look at it. And I've been saying that we might be sleeping on Minnesota who has played wonderfully. In fact, they only finished a game or so behind the the Mariners and the Astros. This whole the notion of, well, they're so inferior. They've had a wonderful September. But right now, how can you pick anyone other than the Astros to win the American League pennant? Because it's all fallen into place. This is a nightmare for the Texas, or first of all, a nightmare for the Seattle Mariners who were in first place by themselves in September. We're going to have a bye, have home field advantage. And now they're going to, they're getting ready to play golf in just a few hours. And the Texas Rangers, who all they had to do was hang on to a lead. They would be the Western Division champions as I speak. All they had to do was win today. And they got shut out by a Mariner team, which some people thought were going to, were going to sit this one out. And now, if you take a real look, take a closer look at the the matchups in the third segment, but they have to go to Tampa and play. They don't get a week to rest their ancient pitching staff and depleted bullpen. They have to fly to the the the, the trap mm. and face the Rays. Mm. And I'm sorry, that is that is a horrific matchup for the Texas Rangers. And so they've gone from, in a matter of hours, from, oh, man, we're going to win the division. We can rest everyone up. And they have to come to Arlington to, oh, great, now we got to go to Tampa. Shades of the collapse of 2012 against Oakland. Um, uh, look, at I love Bruce Bochy. You know I love his lieutenants. Uh, I don't see the Rangers playing beyond this week. But I see the Astros going deep. What do you think about the Astros? 
Wow. I mean, yeah, we'll talk about those matchups a little bit later. Maybe we'll give maybe we'll, maybe we should just give our picks a little bit later too for each. Yeah, team. absolutely. But yeah, because we might we might disagree a little bit out here. But in terms of the Astros, I mean, yeah, like you said, people are mad because the Astros are still the most hated team by far in all of Major League Baseball. No one wanted to see the Astros make it to the postseason. I had Bryce Patrick in my DMs every single night. Tell your D-backs hitters to wake up. We need them to take down the Astros. And the D-back just kept looking at the scoreboard, kept looking at the standings and say, you know what? We can wait another day to clinch. We don't need this one because this Astros team, the reason the people hate them is because they're like Thanos. They are just inevitable. No, like it's because they were cheat because they cheated. What? That's oh. still the reason. Oh, yeah, that's, that's still the reason. The people call them, a, a, it will take a complete turnover of the roster that there's nobody left from 2017 for them to get the stink of that. Whether that's fair or not, that's yeah. why people hate the Astros. Is it because they win? It isn't because you hate us because you wish you'd be a. It's like you are still bragging about a pen, a championship that you didn't earn. I'm not saying that's me. I'm saying that's why everyone hated them. Yeah, for sure. You started with the hate, with the cheating, but then the fact that they keep – they're still here every single season, like you said. Mm -hmm. I, I can't disagree that they shouldn't be the favorites. I mean – uh, we'll talk about those AL teams a little bit later, but this Astros team, once again, is going to be one of the best teams when they make it to the postseason. That lineup, I mean, Jose Altuve is still the best second baseman in baseball. You still have a couple of those mainstays like the Bregmans of the world. Framber Valdez is elite rotation starter. And it's like this Astros team, they just know what to do when they make it to the postseason. They just know how to get the big hits. They just have a sense of belief in themselves and a sense of confidence in themselves. And I just think there's a sort, certain aura and a mystique when you play this Astros team. They just have that villainous, you know, kind of narrative behind them. And I just think they kind of have that like mental edge when you play against them in a series just because you – always going to have in the back of your head, are the Astros cheating? Are they doing any sort of, you know, signal stealing against me? And I think that kind of plays into a lot of these series where you, you know, when you see this uh, Astros team in the postseason. And it's going to be hard not to pick them in any of these potential playoff series. And I think they have a pretty good chance of going back to the World Series once again. And can we give a little bit of credit to Dusty Baker? Can you give a little bit of credit that when – this is what Dusty does best. Is it – in-game management, is it all that other stuff? No. It's keeping the team focused, keeping the team level-headed. Think about all the things you just said. And you have a Hall of Fame manager who has taken – every franchise he's ever managed, he's taken to the postseason. Mm -hmm. Now, he's you could point out that he did poorly in this postseason and that postseason, but he's won the last two pennants and has won a World C Championship. He has many World Series titles as a manager, as Earl Weaver – as Leo DeRocher, as these other Hall of Fame managers. So let's give him, when you're saying all these things, yeah, let's give some of the credit to the manager. Yeah, I mean, Dusty's been there. He's been holding it down. Also, uh, it's hard for me to be mad at the Astros for making it to the postseason when every, like you said, the Rangers and Mariners, like the opportunity for them to knock them out of the playoffs was like right there. Like all the Mariners, the Mariners are four and nine against the Astros this year. They have dominated that matchup this season. Yep. But when it came down to it, the second to the last series of the year, the Mariners needed to win that series to make it to the postseason. And they didn't. Yeah, potentially knock the Astros out, make that put that team on the bench, make them watch from the couch for the first time in so many years, and the Mariners were not able to get it done. But AOS was one of the most exciting things down the stretch. I mean, that got really fiery. But it's like there's no one to blame for the Astros making it to the postseason once again, except for the teams in that division themselves. So don't blame the D-backs for not handling and taking care of business the final weekend. Blame yourself, Rangers and Mariners fans. For many people, the end of the baseball season means they're turning completely away from baseball and focusing on football. That's that's not me, because to me, this is, this is dessert. This is the postseason. But it's the NFL season right now. It's time to snap an action with FanDuel, which is America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 right here. Here it is right here. I'm holding it right now. This is all I got to spend. Put it on the Seahawks. Are they good this year? Um, Are they? I don't know. They Seahawks, still exist. They're solid. They're decent. Oh, there you go. Well, there's my, here's that. And all I got to do is place a $5 bet, and I get $200 in bonus bets 
guaranteed. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, I know I have. There's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. Even Sully can use it. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders. I bet there's more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. We have the playoff matchups. Mm -hmm. Uh, We alluded to the first one, which is the Texas Rangers going up against the 90-some-odd win Rays. I think this is a nightmare scenario for the Texas Rangers. I think this is an absolute – this is of all of – I know a lot of people wanted to get the Twins, you know, because the Twins haven't won since before the birth of my children. My children have beards are in college right now. Wow. But uh, to me, of of all the scenarios – you know, the Rangers possibly playing the Twins. Okay, maybe there's something there. The Rangers winning the West and having a week to sort of dust themselves off. Okay. To have them go to Tampa, play that team, I think the Rangers aren't going to win a game. I think it's two and out for Texas. That's, you know, the Rays are a team that you can't play with because when we look at that team on paper, they've had some breakout seasons from the Yandy Diaz of the world. They got a pretty deep lineup. Their rotation year after year is one of the best in baseball. But like I always say, this Rays team, I think once they get to the postseason, they get a little bit more vulnerable. They just kind of get stuck in their ways. And this Rangers team that has that is fully healthy, fully loaded right now with that lineup. Of course, you don't got the DeGroms and the Scherzers out there, and that's going to hurt you a lot in these pitching matchups. But for just a small wild card round where you just have to get hot for two games, your offense just has to heat up for two games, I don't think it's inconceivable at all that the Rangers can win this series. I agree with you. That's a worst-case scenario where you could have potentially ended up with the Minnesota Twins, who, according to fan graphs, is the team with the worst odds to make it to the World Series this year of of all the playoff teams. Um, so you could have matched up against them. You could have had just a first round bye if you won your division. So now you're ending up with maybe, you know, arguably the best team in the American League they have to face in the wild card round. But I do think this Rays team is a little bit vulnerable. I like this Rangers team a lot on paper. And I do think it's conceivable that they could potentially win this series against the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm not riding them off like you are, Sully. Baby. I am. I think that if we go into, uh, I think the Rangers can win this series, if Bochi doesn't go to the bullpen, if they have two complete game victories, I think the nanosecond Bochi goes out and calls to that pen, this game's over. Give me the red. And the Rays aren't exactly the 1990 Reds or the 2015 Royals who both had, un- or heck, the 2021 Braves, those teams that had incredibly deep bullpens and rode those bullpens to a World Series title. But I trust them a hell of a lot more than I trust the Rangers. I wouldn't trust the Rangers with a 10-run lead at this point. So, I, I look at I think the pitching depth, you know, you say, oh, the Rangers are healthy except for their two Hall of Fame aces. Yeah, but they, besides, they haven't Besides that, this is like, how do you like to play? You know, I'm sorry. I mean, they, they if Scherzer or DeGrom were healthy right now, I'd be, I'd be whistling a different tune. I think if Valdi and Montgomery's fine for just a wild card round, I it's wouldn't want to rely on those two, you know, round after round. But for one round, I think those two could just be fine. We've okay. seen Valdi in the postseason. Be good. I know. I have. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm just uh, to me. It's okay. I'll make. We're. we're that, that's my pick. Two and zero. Oh, Tampa. Moving on. I'll go Rangers then. Let's just put our names on. I'll say Rangers. Two out of three, they win. And according to FanDuel, real quick. Uh, Rangers plus 134 to win the series. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays minus 164. And that would put uh, – uh, uh, the winner of that would play Baltimore. Uh, and then you'd have a Baltimore-Tampa series, which would be the two best teams in the American League. Naturally, they play in the division series. Uh, Toronto is going to play the Twins. And for a lot of people, think of the Blue Jays are thrilled that they're avoiding Tampa Bay and going to Minnesota. I've been saying not so fast – because the Twins have played very, very well down the stretch. Yeah. That, that being be- said, <laughs> that being <laughs> said, I think I think the Twins are going to win a postseason game. Mm. But Ooh. I love the Blue Jays pitching staff. 
I love their offense. I think the Blue Jays could do some serious damage. So I'm going to say, despite the fact that I do like the Twins, and I do think they're better than people give them credit for in that series, I'm going Toronto in three. I'll go Toronto too. I don't like the Twins long term in the playoffs. I think for a wild card round, because Pablo Lopez and Sonny Gray are going to throw them out in your first two games, you're going to have a chance in a wild card round. But I would pick the Blue Jays for the same reasons, like you said, the Bobish Shets, the Vlad Guerreros. Uh, if the Blue Jays could get past this wild card round, I think they're going to be a super scary team because that rotation is pretty deep with the Bassets, <laughs> the Gosmans, the Barrioses of the world. Kuki, uh, 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 Kuki. You say Kikuchi is pitched better? Yeah, Ryu Kikuchi. is pitched better? Yeah. I mean, they, their pitching depth is fabulous us right now yeah it's I, strong so they could be taking a wall card round but if they get past the series look at the blue jays as a potential dark horse in the playoffs i think now so I, I think i agree with you blue jays in this one i think whoever wins that round is going to get absolutely clobbered by the astros in the next round but i digress let's swing over to the national league uh let's do uh, i was really surprised that this was how it turned out uh, it turned out to be Phillies versus the Marlins because this whole last week I've been looking at the Phillies and Diamondbacks as a matchup. And I actually thought Phillies Diamondbacks was a really Exciting. good, interesting, and, and and even matchup. But now you have uh, Miami is going to be going to Philadelphia. The Phillies are playing a lot better. And the mm-hmm. Phillies have good pitching. Yeah, I think this Marlins team is sneaky. I like this Marlins team, and I think this is going to be. Um, I mean, is it an upset? Is a wild card round an upset when it's when it's four or five? I don't know. Um, and there's really, I mean, there's only, well, you know, there's five games separating the two of them. But uh, I'm going to pick Miami in that series, Ooh. despite the fact that I look at. I like. I could look really dumb because the Phillies have Nola, who's very good. They have Wheeler, who's very good. Tywin Walker's not bad. Ranger Suarez can pitch well. Um, I I will trust uh, Craig Kimbrell in a close postseason game. I can't, uh, it, 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 when that happens, or I trust him in the close postseason game, that's when hell freezes over. I think Kimbrell is going to blow a game. I like the Marlins right now. Um, and so I'm going to pick the Marlins in three over the Philadelphia Phillies. I mean, I, I don't hate it. Nola this year has not been prime Aaron Nola. I mean, he has this weird thing where you look at his career every other year, he's good. And then the other years, he's not so good. So the odd years, he seems to struggle. And that's one of those years where he's struggling right now. But this Phillies team, I mean, quietly, they did finish with more wins than last year's team who ended up winning the National League pennant and went to the World Series. This Phillies team, once again, is pretty stacked in their lineup, even though Bryce Harper's coming off like Tommy John surgery and hasn't had the normal power output. He still put up some pretty monster numbers. You still got Kyle Schwarber hitting 40 plus bombs. Trey Turner had a little bit of a down year, still had potential. Like uh, he still had pretty close to 30, 30 numbers. Like I just like that Phillies team a lot. I think a Miami Marlins team is super good, super talented. I just think they're a little bit too young, a little bit too raw, a little bit too inexperienced right now. I think they just need a little bit more, a couple more lumps, a couple more playoff warts before I would pick them in a series like this against this Phillies team that I think is just, you know, pretty loaded, actually, despite being the t- just a wild card team there. I think they're pretty loaded on paper. So I would actually pick this Phillies team. And I actually think this Phillies team is one of the scariest in the postseason. I, I you know what? I I don't disagree with anything you said. You know, if the Phillies get hot, I could see them getting all the way to the National League Championship Series. Yeah, I do. Um, you just got so many dudes in that lineup. That's yeah, crazy. I mean, their, their lineup is stacked. Yeah. And I and their rotation is fine. I'll tell you the wild card of this wild card is uh, Jazz Chisholm Jr. If he heats up and becomes – when he is a player – when he gets hot and the way he gets on base, the way he steals base, the way he could control a game, when when he's playing very well, if that's the one who shows up in the game, then Miami is going to have that table setter. Sometimes he's been ice cold and benched. So it really, in my opinion, it really depends on which version of him you're going to see in the postseason, and that's going to. Uh, but I'm just going to I'm going to stick my neck out and say Miami. But it would not. But I'm going to say in three because it would not stun me in the slightest to see it be uh, to see it be Philadelphia. All yeah, right, I'm- we saved we saved the best for last. We pulled a Vanessa Williams and we saved the best for last. Okay. Uh, it's going to be. The D-backs mm-hmm. and the Brew Crew. 
Um, tell me your thoughts. You know, it's tough. I, I don't think this Brewers team on paper is super scary because that lineup, that offense just doesn't terrify me. The Willie Adamases of the world haven't had great seasons. The Talezes haven't had the power. Like, you're really kind of putting all your eggs in, like, the Christian Yelich basket and things like that. Their rotation is still very good with the Burns and the Peraltas of the world. But the, the season that we've seen from the Burns and the Peraltas is not like what we saw a couple years ago where Burns was, like, the best pitcher in baseball. Peralta was, like, the best number two or number three. Like, they're still very elite pitchers, but they're not having very elite seasons. The bullpen is always nasty for the Brewers. But I think that team is vulnerable. I think the D-backs, of course, they're also a young, inexperienced team. So I don't know how they're going to translate when we get to the postseason. I mean, this is a team that was one of the best in baseball the first two months, then was one of the worst in baseball the second two months, and then ended up just being even keeled the last month. So I don't really know what to make of this D-backs team, but I'm glad that they're playing the Brewers. I think the Brewers are one of the more vulnerable wild card round team so for the d-backs i do give them a solid chance of beating that team it's not like they're going against the atlanta Braves or the la dodgers around the give way. us a pick you coward <laughs> okay i'm going with the d-backs of course uh, you you a homer a little bias but i think the d-back to win a wild card round and then after that i'm probably not going to pick the d-backs again in the playoffs uh it would not stun me if the diamondbacks win because they have zach gallon because you saw how well merrill kelly pitched the other day against an mm-hmm. astros team that was really trying to win um, I, I like the Diamondbacks pitching. I like the Brewers pitching a little bit more. I yeah. think the Brewers have played a little better down the stretch. Um, you're you're going to see both teams throw out an all-star caliber pitcher for the first two games. So, I mean, in so many ways, these first two games are a complete coin toss. Yeah, I would have to check. Actually, the only issue for the D-backs is I think Zach Allen and Merrill Kelly can't go until Game 2 and Game 3 because they had to pitch uh, in this Astro series to potentially right. pitch the game. So but, I think we might see like a Brandon Pot in Game 1. I don't know how that's going to work. And he's pitched well recently. I mean, he's pitched really well recently. Yeah, he's I mean, he's hard. not an ace, but, you know, yeah. um, either way, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I am going to go Milwaukee. I trust oh, him a little wow. more at this point. Wow. Uh, but it, I, I think uh, – the only series I think is going to be a two and out is Tampa and Texas. I think that's two and out for Texas. Wow. And we I disagree can't. on that series. I, I I mean, this Rangers team before the season, I thought it was a dark horse. I mean, part of the reason I thought because maybe you get a little bit healthier to Grom. I mean, of course, that didn't work out. But I love this team on paper from a lineup standpoint. And the lineup right now is healthy once again. So, I uh, I mean, this Rays team, I mean, on paper, too, I mean, they, they don't really have a weakness. But I just don't know if you could trust those players. At least the, the Rangers have the name name brand guys. The Rays have all these, like, diamond the roughs that have breakout seasons. I just don't know how that translates to the playoffs. I don't trust the Rangers bullpen with a 38-run lead. Okay, that's, I mean, that's fair. I mean, it's not good. It's not very quiet. Yeah. I, there's going to be a game where Aroldis Chapman walks off the field with his head down. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can already see the. I can go to FanDuel. Can I bet on that on FanDuel? What do I, can I put down? Can I put down my $5 bet on uh, Aroldis Chapman walking off the field? All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's wrap up this here. Hey, let's do a trivia question. Um, a person who was a huge goat in LeBron. Red Sox history. For losing a key game that was a heartbreaker for the Red Sox, was also previously a Yankee hero in the World Series who threw two complete game victories in the 1977 World Series and was the pitcher on the mound to clinch the World Series, the same World Series where Reggie Jackson hit the five home runs, including three in his final three swings of the World Series. Who was the former Yankee World Series hero that some Red Sox fans thought was a double agent while pitching for the Red Sox? Which Yankee World Series hero went on to crush the dreams of Red Sox fans for a key loss in their franchise history that is your trivia question for me i think that's extraordinarily easy but then i realize not everyone remembers the 1970s so there you go you don't know because nope. you, you i don't even think your parents met at that point yeah, so uh miller thomas tell me where they can follow your show follow me on twitter at career times 24 for my personal account look up locked on dimebacks on both twitter and instagram for the podcast handle look up locked on dimebacks on youtube as well and we're streaming on all podcasting platforms of course 
And you can follow us at Locked on MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal, Sully. Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Saying goodbye to the regular season, but not goodbye to the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's Miller Thomas of Locked on Diamondbacks. I'm your pal, Sully. Let's fist bump for another week.